The Simpsons fucking sucks. True, I haven't watched any episodes past season 12, but a stranger on the internet said the new episodes are bad and they can't be wrong, can they? No matter what you think of New Simpsons, chances are you're pretty fond of the earlier episodes, and for good reason. It was funny, it had heart, and the creators clearly enjoyed making it. It ended up being very popular, popular to the point of oversaturation. And with oversaturation comes video games. Loads of video games. Video games I have never heard of, and video games I wish I'd never heard of. Most of these can be completely ignored, although they're not all bad. I'm pretty sure people like the arcade game and Road Rage is basically just Crazy Taxi, so that can't be too bad. There is one that gets a ton of praise though. You know which one I'm talking about. Virtual Springfield. Obviously I'm talking about Simpsons Hit and Run. It's almost as if it's the title of the video. I've heard almost nothing but praise for this game from everyone who's played it. People seem to love it. Here's the thing though, everyone I've heard praise the game played it when they were a tiny baby. I'm the same, I first played this when I was like 5 and I remember really liking it but I also remember liking Shrek Treasure Hunt. Kids are pretty stupid. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the people who praise the game today haven't played it in years and mainly based their opinion on nostalgic memories. So I'm gonna go back and see if this is actually any good, and if it isn't then you're not allowed to enjoy it. No fun allowed on my watch. The plot's pretty simple, aliens are using a cola to mind control people. But what I just said is technically a spoiler. At the start of the game, you don't know this, you just know of the koala's existence. In fact, the first level is pretty dull in terms of what you're doing. I don't mean the level's boring, I just mean that what you're doing is just like a regular day. You give Lisa a science project, go to work, smash Smithers' car, the usual. The plot kind of slowly develops. I say kind of because the game isn't that long, so compared to most RPGs, this is pretty quick. But considering what this is, it's surprising the plot's treated this way. I'm not complaining, I think it works. It means the plot's constantly moving and there's always new things being revealed, rather than it all being dumped on you at once. The first and last levels both have you playing as Homer on sort of the same maps, but so much has changed in terms of the plot and you can't really pin down a point where everything changed. It's a shame that the rest of the writing is, uh, well... Being a Simpsons game and everything, the plot really isn't going to be a huge deal. I mean, it matters to an extent, but the part that's really important is the characters and the way they're written. But at the same time, being a Simpsons game, the jokes in this are mainly either self-referential or quips. I did smile at a few jokes, but that's out of the tons of jokes that are said constantly, again and again. The characters have a line for everything, every time you jump, kick, crash, it, it just keeps going with more and more unfunny jokes. I didn't even know you could store this much on a PS2 disc. I can't really think of how to describe why I don't like the humour either, it's just not funny. There's no like build up or anything, it's just a lot of funny lines if that makes any sense. It's fine for something like Gex, but this is The Simpsons, which is already established as a comedy. The writers have all written Simpsons episodes as well, it's not like Matt Groening or anyone, but there's some okay credits in there along with the Meme Star Chronicles starring Daniel Keem. I'm not surprised by the way the story came out, but I am still a little disappointed. You could have written a pretty good parody here easily, but instead they decided to cram this so full of references and jokes that not many end up hitting at all. Oh, I've not mentioned any references, have I? Okay. Every corner of this game has a reference. Every line, pickup and location is a reference to something in The Simpsons. Mostly. I'll actually give them credit for this. I mean, these are easy to write into the game, but there are so many of them and it ends up being kind of impressive. But honestly, I'd, I'd rather they spend the time writing actually good jokes rather than references. As it is, this is kind of what I'd expect for a crappy 3D platformer, not The Simpsons. Actually, there is one thing I found pretty funny. The graphics. What did they do here? I know they were translating 2D animation into a 3D game, and yeah, they put in a decent effort, but... God, it did not work out. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Everything's so awkward, the eyes bulge out of every character's head, the animations are stilted, and when speaking, characters just open and close their mouths over and over. There's no lip syncing or anything. Everything wrong with the graphics goes together to make such a strange world and it's just ignored for the unfunny rating. Don't take that as a bad thing either, please just keep ignoring it, acknowledging it would ruin it, it's like Yakuza. What makes this even better is the fact you can kick anyone. It doesn't fit any of the characters or the world, it doesn't even have a purpose in the game, but you can kick any random civilian you want and they'll start rolling around with their arms flailing about. 
Even children. You can kick children about in this 7 plus rated game. If you're lucky, they might fly straight up into the sky, never to be seen again. <laughs> this is great. The awkwardness probably wasn't intentional, but it's the funniest part of this game. A plus for fucking up in a really specific and funny way. Oh, and one last thing for presentation. The music's okay. Some of it's not great, but some of it's alright. It all suits the theme well, and none of it's horrible to listen to, but for me, none of it really stands out or is that good. It's okay, it's okay. So, I guess I'll talk about the actual game now. Well, you know how I said the game could be written as a parody? I wasn't too far off. The game plays GTA, it's just GTA with the torture scenes and the hot coffee. It is kind of weird then that they never make fun of GTA, I mean, wouldn't that just make sense? You're already basing the game off it, why not just write some jokes around that? Eh, what do I know. Anyway, this is basically just family friendly GTA with a Simpsons skin. But that family friendly bit does end up removing quite a bit of GTA, to the point where this is just driving missions. This isn't a complaint, it could even be seen as a good thing because it means the driving is given a lot more focus and most of the game is built around it, for example of the maps. There isn't one big open world here, it's split into three maps, only problem is that there are seven levels so these maps are repeated with slight tweaks to make it feel different. These maps actually work pretty well since they're built for driving. They're like these big racetracks that loop and have lots of shortcuts and secret areas, it, it works really well. With GTA 3 I had an issue with the fact there was no map, because it meant for some missions driving straight to the dot on the minimap could get you lost, since the map is built more like an actual city rather than just a track. In Hit and Run though, you can just follow the dot and eventually you'll reach it. I also think the maps work because they aren't too big, they're just the right size and it means it's not too difficult to memorise how the map is laid out. It might seem like this would get really repetitive, driving on the same map over and over, but it's actually fine. The game's split up into smaller missions within the levels, and these missions don't usually use the whole maps. What also helps is the variety of the mission types. I mean, they all have you driving quickly, but it is slightly disguised by what you're being told to do. There are missions where you race people, missions where you collect things, missions where you have to destroy someone's car, tailing missions, there's a lot of mission types, and for the most part, they're alright. I mean, I could do without the tailing missions, but most of the others work well. The game's not too difficult, at least up to a point. Around the end of the second last level, I hit this difficulty spike, and the missions after that started seeming way more difficult than anything previous. It's not that the objectives are that hard, I think it's because of the hit and run feature. Like GTA, if you do enough damage to the world by doing things like hitting pedestrians, the police will chase after you. However, there are a couple differences. In this, rather than having the star system where you commit one crime and the police come after you, you have this little bar at the minimap. Cause enough damage to fill the bar up and <laughs> would you look at that, that's the title of the game, that's the game up! When the police do chase you, they seem a lot more aggressive than in GTA and, well, they can't die, so they are a lot harder to dodge. And you're probably going to get hit and run later in the game since there's a lot on the map that fills up this meter and you don't have time to dodge it. So late game you have to think about not only the timer but also the police which goes together to make this kind of difficult. Also watch it for your car blowing up, that's another thing that can fail the mission. It's a lot to think about and can be pretty difficult but it works well. What also works well is just the driving. It feels right, the cars have weight to them, but they're all still arcadey and fun to drive. Some cars especially just barrel around corners and get to incredible speeds. It works especially well late game, the cars get much faster and handle much better, but at the same time you're given a much better challenge. Since the cars are faster, you have less time to react to obstacles, so you always have to keep your eyes on the road. Because of this and the fact your cars blow up pretty easily, when you actually do cool stuff, it's so much more rewarding. You start off with pretty rubbish cars that, while still fun to drive, can't get to very high speeds, which works well for starting the game and learning the driving. And as you get better, the missions get harder and your cars improve, meaning you've always got incentive to progress because the game just gets more fun as you go on. You want to get better so you can speed around every corner and finally beat the uh, Simpsons hit and run. Okay, but like, it's still fun. I mean the driving better be good since it's what you're doing most of the time, but this isn't like, oh I guess it works, this is something I actually wanted to do. As soon as I finished the game, I went back to the first level and did the bonus races. I wanted to play more. What I didn't do was replay the platforming levels, these aren't very good. There are bits of the game where you have to get out of your car and do timed platforming. These bits aren't too common, but when they do come up, they're just annoying. The platforming doesn't control well, characters feel really sluggish. It's hard to explain, but when jumping, it feels like you're fighting gravity, if that makes sense. I mean, you are, but like, more? <laughs> I don't know. You don't just smoothly hop, you slowly do this short jump and it's ugh. 
And for most of the platforming sections, it's quite precise, which just feels absolutely terrible. It always feels like you won't make the gap, it feels like you'll just fall straight through. The platforming's rubbish. It's especially rubbish when you have like such a strict timer, so if you mess up once or twice, you just go all the way back. It's, it's not very fun. I mentioned the bonus races a little while back. These are a part of the side missions, collectibles and buyables that are scattered around the maps. There are bonus missions, bonus races, collectible cards, costumes, vehicles and wasp cameras and gags, but those last two don't seem to do anything, they just make this number higher. The bonus missions are just the same as the regular missions but they unlock a car, and the bonus races are just races that also unlock a car. The cards on their own unlock even more references, but if you get all of them in a level you unlock this top down race minigame. It's an alright minigame, I just can't control it properly, I don't know what it is, I just can't play it. Costumes are just cosmetic and they're yet more references, but you know what, that's fair enough. I think in this instance for costumes you kind of just have to go for references. Vehicles are obvious and wasps and gags as I said don't seem to do anything. I've seen people say that the open world of this game is what holds it up and that the main missions are just kind of extras they don't really need to bother with, and I don't agree with that at all. I mean the stuff in the open world is quite fun but there isn't that much of it and once you've done it all there isn't much reason to stick around. The driving's fun but without an objective it just feels pointless. So I don't think the open world sells the game, it only really works as extra content. However, I do think the driving missions work well enough for me to recommend the game. This works well as a short burst of fun driving, though not much else. If that's what you're looking for though, this is great. It's satisfying and rarely interrupted, allowing you to just go from one race to the next. However, if you are looking for anything else, like a good open world or funny writing, I wouldn't really bother. The driving's worth it, but that's about it. Anyway, I'm happy to say this is actually pretty good and something I can enjoy on actual merit rather than nostalgic bias. It's a fun driving game that deserves the following it has today. And I'm sorry for doubting you, Simpsons Hit and Run fans. Let's just set aside our differences and play the racing minigame together. Maybe you can teach me how to finally win it. What? What do you mean it's easy? Oh, come on, no it's not. I... Oh, no, shut up.